one two seven. We thank God for again this day, this opportunity to come together and to share and to this word. For those who don't know, the notes for this lesson are on Facebook. Amen. I, I got it done this week. They're on Facebook already, um, and so you can look at the notes to go through the lesson with us, um, or you can just you just simply print them off later. But they are there um, for your to assist you in understanding this lesson. We've got a good lesson for us. We still, even though we just, even though we're going into the first Sunday next month, we're still in Unit Two, dealing with faith and salvation. Uh, and, and the date for this lesson is August the first, twenty twenty one. And the general subject is salvation available for all. Salvation available for all. Now this is the twist. Amen. Uh, that actually left the Jews behind. Amen. Salvation all because they get the poor up to Christ. Had a monopoly. Amen. They praised the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. They prayed to the heritage, the tradition uh, of the old covenant for the law that came by Moses. But now uh, we're dealing with the new covenant. And the new covenant brings the next room for all. Paul has already said in 117 Romans. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God and salvation to all those that believe. Now, this is important. This is important. Sometimes people, people in the Bible, when we shake our heads, why they, they act like they did. But if you watch us, we'll do the same thing. Because there are some people in the world that we don't believe should have access to the gospel. I'm, I'm going to let you chew it for a second. Help us, Pastor. See, that's the folk. But you feel like you can't get saved from what they did. Mm. And you did the same thing and you say. Yeah. That's the folk we believe don't belong in the church. Especially holding no position. Uh -huh. And they are less guilty than we are. Teach, Pastor. I, 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 are you always with me? So watch this. We have a tendency. <clears throat> To continue to make the same mistakes under a new covenant that they made under the old. But this is what's worse. They didn't have as much Bible to read as we did. So we have less excuse than that. So now we're coming in and, and we're coming in and Paul laid the foundation uh, in chapter 1 through 4. He laid the foundation of salvation by faith and not works. Last uh, week, he gave the implications of it. He gave the implications of it. Uh, that now we should begin to live a godly life. That out of those faith, out of that faith, ought to come some works. So, the, so you're not made righteous by your works. But because of your faith, you're made righteous. But if that same faith is valid, it ought to produce some works. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And so now, coming into chapter 9, Paul begins to take another turn. In chapter 9, Paul begins the discourse of the Jews' place in the plan of salvation. Now, this is the problem. It's hard to move somebody from a seat that they had for a long time. Amen. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. It does not matter whether they've been effective or not, but they've been in the seat. My pastor had a saying he used all the time. He said, move over. And let me walk where you stand. Because we'll slow down and we'll start standing like the man in Psalm 1. And if we don't watch it, we'll be blocking people away. Now, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Imagine yourself on your way to work on Monday morning. You run in a little tight, but you need to get there because you got a good work record. But, Mr. And Miss Stoke on their way to get some coffee and some pancakes. And they ain't no hurry to get there. And every time you change lane, go around and change lane. Are you with me? Now, watch this. You're frustrated because they are slowing you down. Now, watch this. If you're frustrated, because one car slowing you down from your job. Imagine how frustrated Christ must be with all of us slowing down new Christians. Mm. 
Tell you about that. We get our own ready. Ready to do something or something. And so that ought to remind us of what Paul is saying that thank God we're covered by the grace of God. Are you, I, 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 are, you all, are you all with me? And so we're guilty of the same thing that you love folks doing. And the problem is we're guilty of it in a spiritual, and we're guilty in, in, in a spiritual sense. So now the Jews have had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to their father. That's how they like to say it. We got Abraham now for all. Which means we're special with God's chosen people. Because God called Abraham who begat Isaac, who begat Jacob, who became Israel, and he gave us the land of promise. And so we've always been blessed and highly favored. No weapon ever formed against us promise. God laid down our enemies and we didn't even have none. And he forgave us time and time again. We prosper in spite of our sin. We prosper in spite of our disobedience. That's right. We prosper in spite of our hard heart. That's right. And so guess what? They have become used to being the center of the religious universe as it relates to God. Because no matter how bad they got when it all shook out, they still had the true and living God and all anybody else had with them. Gods who couldn't do anything. And then they had a, they know they had a merciful God. And they had somebody, a God who, I, I, I can stop here and preach, a God who parted the water yeah. in the Red Sea. Yeah. A God who had a miracle to tell Pharaoh, oh, let my people, they ain't none of yours, they my people. Yeah. Let them go. <laughs> I, 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 you all you, you, you with me? The God who could promise you what your eyes have seen and your ears haven't heard. And they liked that. Because they were the chosen people. Now, who don't like being the chosen people? Huh? Question. But now Paul comes with, with, with this plan of salvation based on faith. Faith. Grace by faith. Now, forget the fact the Jews had constantly flunked the last test. <laughs> They still consider themselves to be the head of the class. Yeah, right. As a way to God. Uh, 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 are you with me? But now come back here to Paul. Paul was a Jew on his mother's side. A Roman citizen on his father's side. And he was Jesus Christ, apostle to the Gentiles. So Paul was connected to everybody in some shape or form. Some say for him fast. Are you still with me? Yeah. And so when it came to the Jews, he called them his kinsmen in the flesh in Romans 9. Kinsmen in the flesh. They used to be his kinsmen in the spirit mm. when he was Saul of Tarsus. Yeah. I'm going to miss out tonight. If you don't get nothing else, get this in tonight. What I'm going to give you now. Because they were like mine, and they will persecute anybody who did not believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so Paul would persecute for father this new religion based on this person called Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So they had the same spirit and the same flesh. Mm -hmm. They were his double kin. But on his way, they're doing a big job. <laughs> Jesus met him on the master's road. Yeah. And set, he had to, can I get it? He had to knock him down to set him straight. Yes, yes. And sometimes God had to knock us down <laughs> to get us straight. And so now Paul comes, he becomes an apostle for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So guess what? He is no longer their kinsman in the spirit. He still a kinsman in the flesh. Because Paul was a Jew by blood. But not in the spirit. Galatians says, 6 said, in as much as opportunity, do good unto all men, especially the household of faith. Why? Because your spiritual blood. 
supersedes your natural blood. Which brings us into one more family in the church, not based on my father's good. Are you with me? So there are still my kinsmen in the flesh, but not in the spirit. Are you with me? I, 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 I'm getting somewhere. Because now there's something alive in me that's not alive in them. Yeah. Now, where is this leading to? Before you met Jesus, everybody who carried your daddy's blood was your kinsman. In the flesh. And we were trained by the elders to be kin in spirit. Because blood is thicker. Y'all, I need some help in here. And we were taught when you find your kinsmen in distress, you go to the age. You know, they might beat your brothers and sisters up. But when you met Jesus, uh oh, you, the Holy Spirit called you to divorce the flesh. Are you with me? And one of the biggest problems we face is that we fail to divorce the flesh and we hold up our blood relatives whether they get right or wrong. It don't matter what the word of God says. <laughs> and that's the biggest problem the church faces today. Favoritism in relationship. Are you still here? Paul says they are my kin in the flesh. But because my flesh still loves them, I want to bring them over to be a my kindred in the spirit. Why they say something? And they say something. You were kindred in the flesh. You got saved in your relatives, didn't you? The spirit means you must divorce those relatives. And they got new family. But if you really love them, you will seek to bring them back to you. Well, I'm, happy, I'm messing with you now. See, God sought to bring us back to Him spiritually. Are you all with me? That's why He did all He's done to bring us back to Him spiritually. And if you love your kids in the flesh, who will wash your kids in the spirit, you will have a desire to restore them unto you. Are y'all here with me? But no God desired to restore us. There were not some things in us that God could tolerate. Are you with me? See? And once you have to come born again, yes, my love ought to make me, the church come and say, seek the salvation of my kingdom of places. But they cannot become part of my family until they get rid of those things that offend my spirit, which is the spirit of Christ. Teach, Pastor. Y'all feel you? Yes, sir. Don't worry about how you say you. You say that and turn your nose up before. That's right. That's right. Come on, through. That's right. Amen. If who you are, who you say you are, teach. Right. You will seek that salvation. That's, that's right. right. Because I promise you, we will seek the salvation of our, I don't see that kidding and acquaintances. That's right. Not talk about it every time you see them. You can you win more flies with what the honey than you do vinegar, right? Yeah. That's right. Don't be flying. You're holding this trying to make somebody feel bad. So, so now we come to Roman 10. Call, 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 call. I told you. He loved them. And he wanted to see them saved too. Yeah. If you love your natural family, you want to see them saved. That's right. right. I, I you see him. And so he comes to Roman 10. With the same intensity. 
And so we opened that chapter and said, Brother, my heart desired the prayer of God for my kinsmen in the flesh. If that they get saved like me. He said, Father, I'm, I, I, I'm writing them to let them know that they have a sin of God. They honor him with their lips, but not with their hearts. But it's not according to knowledge. Oh, come here, Paul. I'm going to hurt it so bad, Paul. Because that's what most church members are trying to do. When you think you're going to worship God sitting in here singing the song at 11 o'clock on Sunday and don't come to Bible study, you trying to worship by the zeal without knowledge. Teach, pastor. You want to sit in here and sing the, the seven o'clock on the evening. Won't be half the time. It won't come to Bible study for 30 minutes. Teach, Pastor. For they be ignorant of God's righteousness. Going about to establish their own junk. I can say God is home. Who told you that? That's your junk. That ain't what he told you. <laughs> have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Paul, over 50, 15, he said, I told God I love him in that. And so at 10, I'm praying for him. That God would intercede in that life in a way I can. Are, are, are you with me? He said, so I'm going to hold the light. I'm going to hold it light. I'm going to hold it light. To let them know the light is always here. And that's what the church is going to do. We're supposed to be holding the light. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. See, when you turn lights on, bugs will show up. <laughs> Are you all with me? And we ought to go into the world to call the bugs under righteousness. I can't let it call it a crisis, but the son of man that comes to seek and to save, that don't nobody want. That's Luke 1910, that's what he don't say, but that, that's what that's what he's saying. See, we don't want to go into hedges. But the highway is all right. But then the hedges of thorns and snakes and, and which the sand and skeeters and all the things, I don't know, I ain't going there. It's the hardest thing to sit down. Whatever he told you to know. Let me ask the question. If your God is who you say he is, why are you scared of the hedge? Huh? Then okay. David said, whom should I fear? Mm -hmm. Which means you don't know what's in God. Because if your God is who you say he is and you believe it, you won't be scared of the hedge. Because he's not going to send you. Don't play with that. Don't play with that. Don't play with that. I don't play with that. I leave no woman in the play with that. I don't play with that. Okay. Go ahead. My thought is. When you finna bring in some dog, your dog, that's right. No, I don't play. Oh, yeah, you put that down. That's what I'm talking about. Wait a minute now. You finna bring in some dog. I ain't trying to establish my own right. Why am I scared of the head? We don't see it that way. But, but, but that's what we don't. I'm not so much scared of the head or, or that I am uh, 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 skeptical of the head. Time Why? Time. You told me to go there. Look. Let me ask you something. Wait a minute. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. So, Sister Smith, we see you got good balance. Got good what? Good balance. I'm just making something. Okay, exactly. And we got a power line down on Park Avenue. And it's 150 feet above the street. And we don't have a net. But we believe you can fix it. Now watch this. The same man who scared the head that Christ sent him to would take the offer to go fix that body. Are you with me? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to That's why the same folk who believe God don't keep them corona free on their job won't come to church. I just 
who is saying it's tight money, right? Yeah, who is saying that right? It's tight money, right? <laughs> Listen, if God is who I say I am, now why is it called if I catch the wrong, who I'm going to pray to? Yeah. Well, you're you, you making us look bad. <laughs> Just what that is. That's what Paul said. Wait a minute, look. look. He says, God, do you know? I'm saying, see, uh -uh, anything else that I add to this is my my thinking, which is my righteousness. That's right. But he said, and that's our problem. We won't submit to what God's saying. Listen, this is what the Lord is saying. Okay, but is it wrong to be skeptical? What is sin? Anything that is not a way to sin. To okay, the right, though. All right, though. Right. Yes, it's wrong. All right, thank you. And see, that, she, see I told you, she hit me because guess what? We we justify stuff and we don't see the sin of what we do. That's like that human nature. Ooh, human nature. That, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. We're killed in the flesh, the nature. Well, Paul I'm trying to talk you over to the spirit you might get to again. But just like I said, when God brings us back, he said, Yeah, I love you, but there's some things in you now I can't stand. And we must understand that there are some things in our brother that we shouldn't be able to stand that we want again. That we should be able to stand. That we shouldn't be able to stand. Which oh, means we should we should be, I need to get it out of you in order for us to be in fellowship with him. Okay. Because light has no fellowship with God. It's hard. It shouldn't be hard, but something it can be hard. It's hard because this stuff right here. Because we Listen, are, we are, we are flesh. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put some sad one up. We are flesh. And, and the flesh, Lord, the flesh, flesh missed the flesh. And we can't deny that. But there is a workaround. And that's all Paul is saying. Paul is saying there's still my kid in the flesh. I acknowledge that. I have flesh, I have affection for him. That's why I'm trying to get him saved. I want to go to heaven with him. I want to sit in church with him. I want to have as much fun and sing with you in the church as I can sing with you in the car. Because we sound good together. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. I, I, I'm trying to put some sad on this. Listen, listen, listen. Don't go jump off the bridge. But the bottom line is the word of God, y'all, the word of God. And this is what Paul tells me. And see, this will keep trying to cut corners. Question. But see, see, the worst thing you can say in the church is, I don't see it that way. Who cares? God don't. Who cares? I don't care what you know, what you see, and what you can't see. Show me the Bible where God works about what you see. Or what you think about something. But that we all want to bring to God. And this, this is all Paul's saying. They have gone about this after their own righteousness. Things that seem right, but what they're using, they're using the natural mind. Right. It's going to become obvious. It, 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 it's it's going to feel like it here in So you use natural mind. And the natural mind, and I said, and doctors, they seem foolish to him. And so we'll make sound decisions based on humanity, but they're not sound according to God. Peter didn't even sound to walk on the wall. You had to go to that stone, man. That's crazy. It ain't, ain't sound, y'all, to try to walk across that red sea, but that water don't come back around, y'all. Now, hit me, hit, hit me well. Even the best of us, now I've been, I've been sad for me, so now, even the best of us are not fearless. We give them to fear. And God understands. That's why he reached down and hit Peter on it. Now you got it. So don't think Pastor Smith's saying, go in the line then, don't, be, don't have no concern, don't have no fear. It, it, but, but remember, fear is a natural response. Uh, we, we want a fear. spiritual response. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. And so watch this. What Paul is saying, don't justify the fear. Acknowledge it's a flaw. And give it to God. Yeah. But no, we justify it, we're gonna hold on to it. Yeah. Amen. That's what all we say. It won't help. We won't, it won't help nobody. It won't help nobody. And so, and, 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 and so, and so under new covenant, he says salvation is a faith. But Paul is saying. He 
said, because so many of my brotherhood won't accept it. So many of my brotherhood won't accept it. I'm, talking, I'm back on this coronavirus shot. I'm going to go back to the hospital, see if she can be saying she wants you to take a shot or not. In the face of all evidence, in the face of all rational logic and everything else, in the face of all sanity, Paul is saying his kinsmen are still rejected. The word. Are you all with me? Yes, sir. And he said, as long as you are rejecting this word, that can be no that can be no salvation. Now watch this. It is amazing how many people attend church every Sunday and don't read the word of God. I know that. That's a it's amazing. And when you start trying to tell them they will fight you to the nail. Oh, it's it's amazing. How many folk who've been in the church a long time don't read the word of God? Teach pastor. That's why Paul said, "Be ye doers, not forget, but hear and deceive in yourself." Because that seeming and feeling don't get you nowhere. Hmm? That's why they come. They come because they have established their own righteousness. Everybody got the idea of what high church supposed to be. Yeah. Listen. Now watch this. You got the idea of what church supposed to be. That idea is not based on what Jesus said. Look at how much non Christ stuff we do in worship. Think about it. But when you omit something, somebody going to take no new skills, huh? son. <laughs> it has no salvation implication at all. And the only thing they want to cut back is how long the preacher up. <laughs> the part is happy. You never want to say, I ain't going to let your cut across sing too many songs. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm going to y'all. Look, and so watch this. In this text right before us, these are my words. Paul contrasts righteousness attempted by the, through the law versus righteousness attained by keeping. All you can do in the law is attempt righteousness. That's right. But under the under grace, you can obtain righteousness. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. That's it. But we have buildings full of attempters in very few times. Mm -hmm. Because we keep judging each other under the law. Teach past. Doesn't no matter how many sins I've done today, if I hadn't broke the top three ten commandments, I'm good. <laughs> it was a good day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I had to be up long. Any questions coming in, in this text? He better help us. He better help understand why, why they have, why Israel kept missing. But Israel kept missing the mark. They were kept missing the mark because they're using the wrong gun. Mm -hmm. Y'all can hear what I just said. Makes sense. They keep missing the mark because they're using the wrong gun. Mm -hmm. The law is a gun of separation. It's a weapon. Love and grace is a gun of togetherness. It's like Cupid's arrow. It's designed to draw us to the cause of love. It's designed to kill nobody. It's designed to bring life. Question, 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 question. Uh, salvation for all, not just for a group. So let's quit talking about who saved and who ain't saved. And who don't deserve to be in church. None of us. Help us, Pastor. Verse 5. Uh, mm -hmm. Sir. Come on, All right. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 5. 
He said, so I told y'all about Abraham. Who came before Moses? Would you steal stuff on Moses? I told y'all about David. But you still stuck on Moses. I even demonstrated where man's relationship with God was faith-based even in the God of Eden. All which supersedes it all. But y'all can't get more than blood. That's why God said, I don't eat with every day with him. I'm going to take over and marry him when y'all don't even know where he is. Because I, I, I see y'all, man. Y'all y'all stuff on Moses. <laughs> and if we don't watch it, there's some folk in our life that we'll step on harder than Jesus. Mm. Preacher. We got some desires in our life. And we can't see the Lord because we're watching desires. And so he said, leave that junk because Moses described Christ and which of the law. And I've told you it's imperfect. Look what he's saying now. Get this, get this. He said, Moses taught you the best he could. But it was imperfect. See, when I was a child, they told me Pluto was a plan. <laughs> then last year they said it wasn't a plan. That's and right. I didn't know. <laughs> he said, I don't know. I, so I just be, I just just be Pluto. Amen. Okay. But anyway, he said that which the man doing these things should live by them. So he said the only way you can live by what Moses said is fulfilling the law. Huh? Because the law defined God used the law to tell him what. Difficult to right or wrong, right? That's fine. But, and God only gave two ways you could be saved. He gave two ways. He said you could be saved by keeping the law in perfection. Or you could be saved in perfect liberty by complete faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you. On two ways. That's it, the Bible is do have a Bible with good and evil. Night and dark, heaven and hell, right and wrong. Bible, the, Bible, the Bible is a book of two ways. They are two ways. And so he said, this is the issue though. He says, in the middle, he said, yeah, you can be made righteous if you can keep my law. And in my law, you will find righteousness. But Paul has already established the fact that's humanly impossible. How can you maintain a law that requires you to be holy when you were born in sin? You didn't have a chance. <laughs> you were checked up from the start. And by the time I get to you, ain't gonna be no Kool-Aid in the cup. 
<laughs> I, 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 are you with me? It's impossible for a man who walks crooked to hold a pen straight. So since the law is based on you, it's impossible. Mm. Because you couldn't. <laughs> Listen, 
And so if you dare you don't get next to me. <laughs> you still just stay about, stay about two, three feet from me. I'll put dirt on me. <laughs> so why in the world Jesus who is without sin? We're both a dust in you mm. and a mud in me. Mm. They clap their hands on him. We have not done anything for Jesus, but he did it all for us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so he said, he said, he said, he said, he said you ain't got to go to heaven and bring Jesus down. John 3, 16 said, God already did. <laughs> you ain't got to go to heaven and raise Jesus up. Romans 8, 11 said, God already did. Mm -hmm. So what your part is that? <laughs> so why are we sitting in the house of God right? Yeah. Yeah. Is your field the rag in the dirt of the man? Shot by the building. 
because you wanted to. And so he said, the word is not even in thy mouth as the word of faith which we preach. Look what he's saying. He said, I'm, I'm one of these old scriptures that this is what y'all stuck in. I'm, 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 I'm going to say this again to you too. Now I'm going to make the preachers mad. We got too many doctors to preach one fight the Old Testament. If all of you out here preach every Sunday in the Old Testament, but they're not with my salvation anymore. Then tell you that revelation. No, that's what my hope is. Oh, yeah. Are you now ain't that wrong with the Old Testament? But I need to know Jesus came. Yeah. Old Testament says he's coming. Right. But my hope is built on nothing, nothing yet. Right. See, this is their problem. Yeah. They want to stay on the old folk. Ezekiel and Jeremiah, all of them felt good. But if I made for one name, you're not here, why wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, no. And you hear some of the preachers preach about God out there, never mention Jesus. Amen. You're going to keep your whole hour and never say Jesus. Amen. Never say salvation. Learn how to listen what you listen to. Teach pastors. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. And so, and so. He's saying that this, I'm going back to the Old Testament. To let you know the Old Testament is agreeing with me, not with you. Who you understand? In Hebrew 10, 12, 10 7, Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. What are you talking about? The Old Testament said, I'm coming. Genesis 3 15 said, In the seed of a woman, that's Jesus. Joel said, at my time, I quiet your spirit. That's Jesus. Isaiah 7, 14 said, this is be a sign that a woman shall, a virgin shall conceive. That's Jesus. <coughs> in 9, 6, another child is born a son to give. That's Jesus. Yeah. Old Testament is leading me to Christ. Amen. Just like the Lord leading me to Christ. That's right. And it's so late y'all get there. Don't leave me one of all my don't never get there. <laughs> you may make the wrong turn or something. That's all right now. But it's time to go wild, y'all, to get there. You ain't in the wall like that. And then you tell me in line to make me feel better. I'm going to leave y'all up. I'm going to leave y'all up. And, and, and so, because why? Christ is the end of the law. Thank you, God. And, and in verse 8, Paul just quoted Moses in Deuteronomy 30. He used his own scriptures. They show them that ignorance. Just like t shirts show out ignorance. Help us, Pastor. You run around teaching my best on the wrong time. And you cussing somebody out in the family. <laughs> Help us, Pastor. You don't even know what that means. <laughs> Well, that don't got to be getting water rubbing. Now, he getting prepped up to go fight. 
That's the worship here. That's how I love that. You ain't doing anything here but having a good time. You know I can't get started up some more. I'm gonna need y'all. I know y'all would be mad, right? Watch, watch, watch. And, 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 and so he says, he says that Paul used the word of Moses to help these folk understand you're ignorant about what you're trying to teach. Mm. It's amazing how many preachers won't step under the teaching. You go to past study Sunday, I get called to preach. You want to name me Sunday? <laughs> and next week, I'm starting to the church, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't they nowhere? <laughs> That's about how it is. If God called Jesus to 30 years of preparation for a three year ministry, what about you? Oh, and the last 40 days, what? When God called you, you ain't qualified. God called you to the equipment room. When the army drafted you, you ain't ready to go to war. That's right. You can't do it in the kingdom, sir. You better go to basic training. <laughs> and then stay that. Don't fool yourself. The devil got some real sharp shoes. And so he said, what was meant? He said, it takes both of them. It takes both of them. But watch this. The confession brings us, the, the confession leads to the heart. Because you say something up of your belief. And, and, and with the heart, man, the leading of the righteousness. You're not righteous because of what you say. That's right. You're right because it takes root in your heart. And let me help you here because my time being short. That the confession and belief he's talking about is not a one shot deal. Throw the morning get shot. Because yeah. most devil would come to the church that way, get up and make any other way to work. <laughs> Preacher. The confession. And the belief is an ongoing process in life of Christian that brings about sanctification. How many of y'all got to graduate in, in, in kindergarten? I did. You got a high school diploma? No, I graduated. Oh, you graduated. <laughs> but that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. They had a ceremony. That's right. And you, and all we, all we is they can shoot them up. <laughs> you still come and they go crazy. Right? And they go come and that's that. But you didn't get it. I did. <laughs> yes. That's the problem in the church. You know what? We ought to start giving out grades and attendance in Sunday school. Preacher. Like you read the church. Mm. Because when most folks see how much they miss, that's right. Because the flesh blinds you, your actions, y'all just miss what I just said. You don't think you're missing that much. So you see it back in the way. Amen. We need progress reports in church. Question. It's a continuing process. That's called sanctification. Justification is not complete salvation. Jesus said, He's Simon, Simon, Satan decided to have you made sick like we. Now we're going to apostle people. But I pray for your faith that you like, Apostle Peter. <clears throat> and when yeah, thou yeah. art converted, that's right. Turn your brother. He was converted. He was saved. And most church members are unconverted. That's why the church is struggling so hard. <laughs> Help us, Pastor. <laughs> If you got a car full of Negroes, and all of them always broke, the car's gonna offer them exactly the wrong. <laughs> and that's the church's problem. The church out there with the gas can. 
<laughs> but tell me what heaven can't stand. God said he the keys to the kingdom. Right. Yes, right. I'm out for everything in the church you need. Because before I require my surprise, so I know you got it. Yeah. So what can I get that skin out? Being on the church involved in everything but ministry. Well, I'm getting hot enough. I'm making the folk mad today. The church ain't no social club. <laughs> Preacher. Church ain't care where's an office. That's it. Repeat that. What is an office? <laughs> and what ain't, ain't about you being married, it's about you not having individual in, in it some more. If you got a grandchild, he's a nephew, you ain't no what? I don't care how long you look at it. Church out of ain't they take care of everybody. Yeah. That was social organization for. Mm -hmm. Our job was different in Christ. Amen. But if the preacher ain't marked on the bridge because your nephew killed your brother, mm -hmm. you got something to say. But he begged you to bring him to church, he wouldn't bring him. I'm gonna leave y'all on. Alright. Somebody said, okay. Watch, watch. You get you get it. Okay. And so watch this. He says it's twofold. It's got to be inward and outward. But the change happened with it. He said, for with the hard man believeth unto what? Righteousness. Do you really believe? It's easy to say something with your lips. That's right. But do you really believe it? If you believe it, you'll operate in it. I'm not leaving here going to Chicago on a car that I think may not make it. I'm going to wait till a ride comes. Mm -hmm. And we find, I told you last week, that Jesus introduces himself through tribulation. That's why Paul said we glory in it. Because whenever trouble comes our way, Jesus is right there with you. Thank you, God. You're getting me through it. Yes, sir. So what do you, do, do you really believe in? Islam believed in Jesus. That was a Jesus. Buddhists believe that was a Jesus. Jews believe that was a Jesus. But what do they believe about that Jesus? Question. So he's saying, we're talking about faith that becomes faithful. If you were going to sing in the choir, but you think I'd keep calling you every Wednesday. Right. If you got to come out of the choir every Wednesday, there's something wrong. Amen. Amen. You Amen. ought to be here to chill. What's your name for? I've been here for 30 minutes. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are, you on, are you on with me? Do you really believe anybody's way? Do you really believe what you think you believe? Not just mess you up in. Mm -hmm. Do you really believe what you think you believe? Because most of us think we believe. That's right. Most of us think that way. Most of us think we love Jesus. Mm. But look at how much stuff in front of us. Mm. Listen, you couldn't love me putting as much stuff as you put in front of Jesus. <laughs> Preacher. If I call my wife, they said, they come too far to reflect that. She needs to drop everything in the That's right. Listen, go work out. You want to ride home with me? You need to go with me get my husband and walk home. <laughs> okay, on the side of the road. Are you all with me? And she expects the same thing. Uh -huh. I don't expect to be on the side of the road. And she took everybody home. Then went to Walmart. <laughs> 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 That's how we do the Lord. I got to go. Amen. Question. Question. He said, verse 11, he said, what scripture said, who's going to believe shall not be ashamed. He went back again and he went back again and, and quoted Isaiah. Now, I got on the script when you, when you see ashamed, uh, he going to see make haste. Because Paul is right quoting in Greek in, in Old Testament in Hebrew uh, translation. And remember, for every Hebrew word, uh, for every English word, there were eight different Hebrew words. I mean, seven different words. So our, our language is, is convoluted. We use the word, well, same word to mean 10 different things. Hebrew didn't do that. Okay, so when you read the scripture, you'll understand. But he's quoting the Old Testament. He's quoting folk they know. He's quoting what's committed to him. Verse 12. He said, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Y'all want to make a difference. 
But the same Lord of all is rich when all who come from him. Now watch it, this is the issue. I'm running out. The Jews have inheritance by good, by birth. I would hear him something by faith. Paul, Paul says, he that believeth in Christ is also Abraham's seed. The Jews won't get him because of his natural blood. You, yours come by faith, that asks the same thing. Thank you, God. The Jew can't have done, you ain't got to ask him, but you got to believe. He born into it physically, he born into it spiritually. And so he concludes that one law of my faith and baptism was one God above all the other who are. It's the same God. Which means we're all brothers and sisters. But we got too many folk in the church. We don't feel like they relate to us. <laughs> well, that's why people say business in the street. <laughs> Preacher. Uh, uh, I need to look at Romans. Uh, I, I had that at the Romans 7, 6 through 8. Let me see why I had that. Hold on. That's verse 12. Jump down to verse 12. Uh, so there's no difference. All right? Now, watch this. In Romans 11, 6 to 8, he says, Then by grace no more works, otherwise grace is no more grace. He says, So trying to work out your, work out your justification mitigates God's effort on the other hand. You can't, you can't do what God is, you can, you can do what God has, has already done. But he said, if you come in by faith, you have, have obtained the, the same right, the same inheritance that the, that the Jews had. Why? And it's already done because our God is rich to whomever. See, he's been rich to the Jews, the promised land. But he's rich to all. Now watch, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just say this. Somebody that I talk about the final, God's final promise. His final promise. And that's what's important. Not the temporal promise. See, in the temporal promise, there can be some little differences. But in the final promises, we all have the same thing. Where is the final promise? The final promise is glory. And guess what? That is the end game. The end game is not going to be here. But what's over there? Did not build treasures on earth, but the moth and the rust doth corrupt. We lay out our treasures in heaven. That's the end game. And listen, somebody said I trade a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Just one day. For just one day. In paradise. The longest, I'm 61 years old. My mama, 90. I can get my mama. I got 30 years. Mm. But that ain't like me. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Why would I trade this little bit of time I got here? For all of the time that's over there. Mm. And so Paul says, put your eggs in the, in the eternal baskets. And let the day take care of yourself. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first. Anybody got a question? All right. God bless you all. Amen. You got it, Jesus. God bless you all.